I'm here in Medjugorje and I'm with a lady from New York. And what's your name? Carla. Carla. Very, um, you look the, the power from, of habit. I'm, I'm from Westchester County wow. in New York. Unbelievable. Westchester County, beautiful place. And you said how many times you came here? A, a little over 23 maybe. 24 times, yeah. Why do you come back all the time? Our, our Lady is calling me um, to come and to just pray and to just be. Wow, just be. Mm -hmm. I think this is the message of Medjugorje, actually. Mm -hmm. I made 1,600 interviews, but I think that is the conclusion. Just be. Mm -hmm. Don't perform, just be. And um, what touched you when you came the first time that you come back all the time? Um, well, the first time I came, I was here for two and a half days, and I did not have a great experience, and I waited. I had read Wayne Wabel's book. Um, that called me here, and then all of a sudden, I don't like to travel, I have an anxiety of traveling, and I read this book and I felt a call, call deep in my heart, and I had a father, and I was in my 35, maybe older, and my father was like, absolutely not, are you going to go across the world to Bosnia, Herzegovina? Absolutely not. And he kept telling my husband, don't allow your wife, that's ridiculous, uh, you know, be a man and do not allow your wife to go. So I kind of put it off, but then every, in, within a matter of one month, every time I went somewhere, um, I either met a priest that was giving a talk at a church about Medjugorje, or I ran into um, somebody or something that, you know, kept putting Medjugorje into my life. So I felt really called, and I went on a retreat to pray for my dad, who was just diagnosed with cancer, and I had a young aunt who also was battling um, cancer, and I came across a trip. I went on a retreat, and they, they were going on a pilgrimage, and they had, like, one spot left. So that's why I felt that was a real true calling and a door opening for me. Wow, that's what we all, all the people say. You have a personal invitation by Our Lady, if not, you come here. A lot of people yeah. say, even a lady now said, just before you, the last spot. Often people yeah. tell me that the last spot. Yeah. And yeah. So and when I got here, I, I happened to have, by the time I got here, I had a rash. I, I had a parasite, which, you know, I waited all this time to come and we were diagnosed, my family with a parasite. And it was at the end, tail end of it at home. And um, I got a call from the CDC where the health department saying that I had this parasite but already I had been treated um, and I shouldn't leave the country um, and I was like listen I'm on my way to the I was on the way to the airport that I got this phone call and I was like yeah I waited this long you know I'm going what do I do she said just don't eat anything raw but I got here and I happened to get develop a rash and it was 104 degrees here got a rash from my ankles that was under the skin that was traveling out my body I ended up at the hospital in Mostar um, you know, it, and they still don't know if it was probably a reaction from the medication I had taken or from the sun um, and some sun spray that I had put on that went into my bloodstream. Um, but anyway, so being that I left here saying I would never come back and 25 years, 20, you know, five years and I've been back. So some so often you have been back, no? Yeah. But when you came back only 25 years later, no? No, 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 no. But, 20, but it's been like 25 years. And you yeah, come so often come. here. Mm -hmm. So why do you come back all the time? Um, well, at first it was for myself. And then my desire was to... Our Lady kept putting people, a uh, young niece, um, my children. They all wanted to come back. And they will, I invited them to come, but they couldn't come at the same time. So it was like kind of one by one. I took one in June, and then in September, another one said to me, I want to go. Why didn't you take me? So I came back in September. So it just kind of happened that nobody can come at the same time. So one by one, I was bringing them. But, you know, you had this rush. You were at the hospital, yeah. and you're bringing all these yeah. people. Why do you bring them? What is Medjugorje for you? There must have I been want, an impact. I, it's something that you can't explain, the peace that you feel here, and the desire in your heart to be back here and to always be here. It's beautiful that we're supposed to bring Medjugorje back, and, and we bring it back in our hearts, as my guide always told me, um, that we bring Medjugorje back in our hearts and we bring to people. But it's something that I wanted them to experience for themselves. And what so. is it? What you want them to experience? The peace. The peace. The peace and the love. Unbelievable. You always have been Catholic in your life? Yes. Never astray? Um, 
just maybe when I got married, I stopped. I when I had my first child, I kind of strayed as a young girl. I used to go with my girlfriend to mass. We used to make it a Sunday thing. We would walk to mass and then go to the flea market after mass. Um, so it was always implanted. I went to Catholic school my whole life, but was I? Did I understand and know my faith? No, I did not. Where did you understand it the first time? When I started going on uh, retreat, when I found Father Ralph Diorio, um, healing priest in Massachusetts, when I started praying for my father when my father was diagnosed with cancer. And That's what, when I really found my faith. And if I may ask, what did you find? What is the beauty of our Catholic faith for you? The beauty of, I'm sorry? And the Catholic faith. What did you find or found? Um, the hope, the joy, and the love and the peace. Did you make the experience, because a lot of people think that God the Father is an angry old man with a white beard who wants to judge us and put us to hell. They are so ticked off, they don't want to hear about it. If you talk to regular people on the street in Germany, they don't want it. But you have experienced the God of love, God the Father is love. Did you experience that? Yeah, and it is true, because growing, even when I was raising my children in the beginning, um, I would say, God sees it, God's going to punish you. And then when I had my conversion, so to say, and my, my words started changing, and the way I started speaking, they were confused. And they would say, you know, you told us God was going to punish us. It was very hard to backtrack and tell them that no I was wrong I didn't understand and then trying to teach them all that so which I'm very blessed because um, when I when I did need them to when I struggled when I couldn't help them I always had a great priest to bring them to and I always found a spiritual director that I could bring them to and to speak to when I saw in their teenage years they were struggling and the first thing the priest would ask them is, did your mother make you come? And at first they would say yes. And he's like, all right, well, then I'm not going to talk to you. No, 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 but we, but it's okay. It's okay. We'll talk. <laughs> so um, I always knew the answer was when I couldn't give it to them to bring them to a strong spiritual director that can help them through it. Through it how whatever. beautiful you did, you know, yeah. how beautiful. And, that's and then they would yeah. go whenever, <laughs> it's yeah. funny because whenever I would bring my daughter um, to a night of confession, it was always to where I knew the priests were very gentle and soft and understanding of that age group. Um, they would go crying, you know, and then they would, they would be, the priests would be laughing with them and they'd be crying and smiling. And I always felt that that's where, you know, God wanted them and needed them. And I always was led by the Holy Spirit what and where to bring them. A lot of people want to have this guidance of the Holy Spirit. How can you have that? Um, through prayer, through going to adoration is, is what helped me, is just going every day in adoration and saying, okay, I'm here. I don't know how I'm supposed to pray. I don't know how I'm supposed to come to adoration. I don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing, but I just showed up every day until I understood. So and beautiful. It, took, it didn't yeah. happen in one day. It happened in months. It's a progress. Mm -hmm. We are all a work yep. in progress. Yeah. And look, this people are singing, God is happy with you. I'm so sure because it's yeah. amazing. And um, so confession, you know, it's very central in Medjugorje. What would you tell people why not to be scared of confession? Um, because each priest here um, is sitting at those confessionals. And when you pass by one day, you pass by two days, and you see the priest si still sitting there cold, hot, and they sit there, they could be sweating or they could be freezing. And the patience and the love that they have to sit there all day long. And eventually you realize that, you know, it's God sitting there yeah. waiting for you. Yes. Because no human can sit there for that many hours. Yes, absolutely. And we got to pray for our priests. Mm -hmm. Don't forget that they are the front line of yep. the spiritual combat. I yep. see you have the rosary yeah. in the hand. Padre Pio said it's the weapon of our mm -hmm. times. What is so powerful about the rosary? Even just when my kids were young, um, I, they always slept with the rosary and I always had them sleep with the rosary, especially when they got a little older to understand. And um, when one of my daughters was always having nightmares and I would give her rosary beads to sleep with, we would... Um, we weren't doing a family rosary. So that was the one thing when I come home from Medjugorje each time, okay, we gotta sit down and do a family rosary. And they, they gave me a, a, a struggle with it, you know, they did. Um, 
and but they say no we'll say it on our own so once in a while we will you know I would be able to get them to do it um, but I got a lot of pushback on it but they did sleep with their rosaries and um, even especially when went to col when they went to college to bless their room hang a crucifix um, in their room and to give rosaries and during the college years which are college normal child's college years I would bring home the St. Benedict bracelets um, and my daughter was known at one of the Catholic colleges, they would, and it wasn't so Catholic, but Catholic, um, they would be knocking on the door, are you the girl with the Jesus bracelet? So she made a lot of friends, um, and she would call me up and say, you know, you need to bring me on more Jesus bracelets, which the St. Benedict bracelets. Um, and I would always have the exorcism prayers on them, and I felt that these prayers did help these children um, during college, these young adults, because two of them lost their parents during college um, and then even when I was here I would get phone calls all the time you know so and so can you pray for this one can you pray for that when they heard you're in Medjugorje can you please you know pray this is what's happening right now so um, the message you know is is deep within even though they may not be doing the rosary they know where to go when they need to go yes exactly so beautiful how you said and our faith that's our faith when you're in a state of grace when you and to confession, you can receive the Eucharist. It seems a lot of people, young people, old people, Catholics don't understand what is the Eucharist. What is it? Can you explain? Uh, um, that's, a, that's a hard one. Um, I, I try to, to understand um, myself being, um, and I do know the difference when my heart is prepared and when my heart is not, and then to really, by coming here and to really understand what Our Lady is asking us, especially when she's told Yvonne, if it's you have a choice of coming to see me or going to Mass to see my son, you always go to, the, to my son. So when I started to really understand the true gift of the Eucharist and receiving, and receiving it daily, I did make it a point to, um, my day starts with daily Mass. Um, because of that, to receive Jesus and have Jesus present in, in my heart to start the day. And it'd be f interesting because when my kids were younger, they would know the days when I picked them up from school, um, the days I didn't get to Mass that morning and the days I did. And they would say, you didn't get to Mass today, did you? They would know the difference. And that made me more conscious of myself and receiving Jesus, Jesus. every day the true presence of yeah. Jesus blood yep. and body the of Christ presence. what did they see kind of a difference what did they say you the, the, peace? the peace and my demeanor you know my patience me too yeah. I have to con admit yeah. I, confess, was a, I was yeah. a lot kinder yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> me too I have to admit and confess and um, you got a favorite saint oh many 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 favorite saints. So Padre Pio was my first um, saint that I got to know and that was you know during struggle so my daughter had epilepsy when she was uh, a child so um, the Sacred Heart of Jesus was very dear to me. I had an experience in the church um, when she was going in for an MRI with a statue of the Sacred Heart of Jesus that you know just spoke to me and became truly present in front of me um, that when I went back years later to that same church and I'm looking for this huge statue and it was this little tiny statue of the Sacred Heart of Jesus so um, and through the Sacred Heart of Jesus I learned to go to through Pajo Pio but he's just one of the many um, Saint Saint Therese is another very beautiful of favorite Lissu saint or Avila. of Lissu. Lissu, why, why her? It was my grandmother's a... favorite saint. I had taken her as my confirmation name and I just I felt her in my life Present. always. Mm -hmm. She says for people do little things mm -hmm. with love and they are big right. things and I strongly so, believe in this. Yeah. And um, you got a favorite Bible scripture? Um, that just generally? A story from the to Bible? no fear. So nope. I keep going to all the scripture where it says no fear. Do not have fear. I am with you. Do not have fear. I am with you. So I, I seem to go back to that one because I'm a worrier. Me too. Um, and I do worry about everything. 
and I have to learn to surrender and that I'm not in control of anything. So, Did you make the experience so beautiful, you say, when you surrender, that you have more peace, joy, and everything by itself falls into place, as God says, Exodus 14, 14, I'm God, be still, I fight for you. Mm -hmm. You made that experience? Yes. So the, and that was through the, um, that novena, it's a father rotondo. Yeah. Dolindo the, Rotondo. Dolindo, yeah. Uh, surrender novena. Mm -hmm. What did you make for an experience there? Um, for that, because as someone from Medjugorje had given me um, that to, to look up, and it was before COVID. And so during COVID, um, I remembered it and I found it on YouTube and I would go to sleep listening to that. Um, every night and through my experience and I, I feel Medjugorje did prepare me and mother was compare, preparing me so I lost my brother in May that year of, of COVID before COVID hit the United States um, suddenly he had you know he's only 45 lost him suddenly and probably to a you know heart heart attack and then COVID hit and my sister was one of the first cases in New York on a respirator and everyone in the unit had died and she was still alive and they kept saying oh no she's not going to make the weekend so she was in there like four weeks five weeks um, and it was through Medjugorje and what I learned in Medjugorje and what I learned through St. Faustina through Divine Mercy and it was the Friday before and I had you know the prayer groups from Medjugorje all praying um, Yvonne and his prayer group you know he was checking in and he was praying with me a lot and I was reminded of St. You know, Divine Mercy Sunday was coming. It was the Friday before. My brother-in-law called me. He goes, you really have to prepare yourself. He goes, they don't think she's going to make the weekend. And they hung up the phone. He says, no. I said, and I called him back. And I said, you know, I said, this is Divine Mercy weekend. I said, St. Faustina told us that we can ask for the mercies that people don't accept. And we can ask them for for for." A, a situation so I'm going to go to prayer and three priests happened to call me that day and all three priests happened to say the same thing to me so I by the time I got off the phone with the third priest I was like she's gonna have her miracle on Sunday and there was a priest in New York uh, Father Justin Sinanti he's a Carmelite that everybody knows because he gives his whole life to God and to um, to everyone he meets he had been going around the hospitals with the monstrance um, exposed and praying the rosary and bringing Jesus around all the neighborhoods um, in New Rochelle with our first case and then the hospitals and praying, praying, praying and I called him and we, he had gone around the hospital many times with us and I told him, I said, she's going to have her miracle on Sunday and he goes, okay, he goes, well, we'll go Sunday, we'll start at 2 o'clock and we'll just, you know, go around the hospital and I called my brother-in-law back and I said, I know she's going to be off that respirator on Sunday by 3 o'clock, you watch and you see he goes, no, you have to come to reality he said that she may not make the weekend and you have to accept this and I was like, nope I'm not going to accept this you do you, but I'll do me Saturday morning, he called me back. He goes, what's this divine mercy? Um, I had this, you know, he was a lawyer and he was retired and somebody, his partner called him and said, you know, we're praying for Joanne and she may have this divine mercy miracle on Sunday. So I had another family all the way, you know, across the United States that also, you know, unbeknownst to me, had been praying the same thing and he started to believe. So make a long story short on Sunday she, three o'clock hour they had taken her off and she was breathing on her own and she survived and she was the only one in that whole unit had, that had survived coming off the respirator during COVID. Hallelujah and that's for somebody listening so, now the power of the divine mercy chaplet. Yeah <clears throat> not only the power of divine mercy but you know I, I said that day when I felt that in my heart I said, okay, you've been coming to Medjugorje all these years. You've been praying. Do you really believe what you're praying? Do you really believe that all your prayers, like, or is, was it for nothing? Do you really believe in my, in my mercy? And I, it was really, you know, and I had surrendered. And I had said to God, if you take, if you take her, you took, you know, Albert, you had a reason. If you take her, you'll have a reason. I do accept it. I'm not questioning it, but... I do feel you want to you want to perform this miracle, you know, for her, and for this, him, for his glory. Yes, amen. Wow, so powerful. I hope you listened well. Listen to it again. This mm -hmm. is one of the most powerful stories I ever recorded. 
because we all have to grow in faith and he's testing us God is testing us it's written in the Bible yeah. you are tested mm -hmm. and um, what's your favorite place here in Medjugorje you have a favorite oh spot? so many spots so many spots I love just walking through the fields in the peace and praying through the fields um, I love Blue Cross you know to pray at the bottom of Blue Cross but there's nowhere nowhere in Medjugorje you know that you could go that Our Lady hasn't been so anywhere it, here is my one of my they're all my favorite spots yeah, all of them all of them yeah, you like Our Lady on top of uh, Parisian Hill I do there? and I will admit I've, I've climbed Cross Mountain a few times but I, I haven't I don't do it all the time like but I do like to go um, you know when yeah, it's Parisian not too Hill. hot I could do Apparition Hill so now it's a nice time it's September beautiful. October mm -hmm. you know it's balanced temperatures And at the end, what would you tell people why come to Medjugorje one time? Um, I find a lot of people come because they're curious. And then I find a lot of people come to pray for a specific prayer. Um, I, that's a hard one. Um, I, I would say when you want to just be and have peace and, and you don't even need to know any prayers. You don't have to ever have had said the rosary. But to come and and you'll learn what it is to open your heart to pray, and to just hear Our Lady speak to your heart. Amen. And we all want that that personal relationship. That's what Our Lady is teaching here. And you also learn to live from the heart here, to pray from the heart here. How is that for you? Yes. And that was a hard one for me because I didn't understand what that really meant. And it took me a long time to feel. But it was just by sitting quietly at night um, in front of the Blue Cross and praying and. And it was just opening your heart. It was just praying and just listening and just being still. Being still, as we said, Exodus 14, 14. Mm -hmm. Wow. What can I say? Thank you for this beautiful, oh, beautiful thank you. interview.